the reasons that you didn't know you needed carnivore. Mm-hmm. And what what had been the the surprising things for you that have happened? Well, it's it's easy to to see some of the obvious things. Like I didn't know that depression would be cured. I didn't know I, I figured that the weight loss would happen because that's so prevalent in our community. Everybody talks about the weight loss. Everybody starts for the weight loss. And obviously that's something that I desired going into this. I didn't know if it would work. I was skeptical. Um but I talk at nauseam about the weight loss. I didn't know that the depression would be cured. I didn't know that the gout would be cured. I didn't know that I would be saving money because I didn't have to buy those prescriptions every single month for the for the issues that I was having. I didn't know that um, by curing the depression or reversing the depression, I didn't know that I would have so many possibilities open up to me to move in different directions there's so much i feel like that we don't realize that we don't have that whenever we start eating carnivore and things start snowballing in different directions i feel like it opens up and reveals to us things that we need along the way so we go into it for weight loss and we come out with so many more benefits that we didn't know that we need or needed originally, or maybe we knew that we needed and they were just too far out of reach for us to obtain, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of feel that what happens is, you know, when you're at work and things get out of control and what happens is, is all these things going wrong at work and, Rather than going, uh, stepping back and going, okay, well, I'm going to look at what the foundational issue is here and fix that. What you end up doing individually and as a team is you're just running around putting out all these spot fires. Mm -hmm. And because you're doing that, it just kind of gets worse and more confusing. And I think Carnival is almost, does help you with that, but Carnival is the mirror of that, but in a positive way. And it's that what happens is things are slow moving when you get started, right? But they're consistently moving and there's so many of them. It's like those spot fires all starting, but again, in a positive way. But um, you, there's just so many of these improvements happening that you, you can't keep track of things. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we'll, and then we'll, someone says, what improved? And it's like, oh, well, hang on. I haven't written them down. There's so many. Right. It's easy to go back to the ones that are obvious for us. But like even I was on a live with you guys with Chafee and I realized that I didn't that my hernia had been healed. Like I had a I had a softball sized knot in my chest. Like when I lay down, it would protrude out of my chest. And it was the size of a, like a softball, an oversized baseball. And like, I didn't even realize that it had been healed or had, had dissipated or gone away until months and months and months after starting, like over a year after starting, I was sitting there alive and Dr. Chafee was talking with us about hernia stuff. And I was like, it just hit me all of a sudden, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my goodness. And like, I I remember going back and watching the live show that we were doing that night and seeing the look on my face, like, oh my gosh, like it's gone. Like I didn't realize it It was a big deal. Like to me, it was a big deal because it was painful. Like it, it, it would throb and it would like, I couldn't breathe very well. Had I, like, I had no idea that that would happen. And I did it like I was so oblivious to the fact that that could be healed that I wasn't even looking for it to be healed and it healed. And I didn't even realize that it had been healed until we were talking about it down the road. Right. And then I just happened to like, hold up, wait, it's not there anymore. Like I don't have this softball size thing. There's so, I had so many issues that a softball size protrusion out of my, right above my diaphragm disappears and I don't even notice it. Like that's how big of a deal, like things happen in carnivore. 
you don't realize it. So there's so many things that we don't realize. Um, and, and I mean, to stay on track, honestly, one thing that I didn't know that I needed was um, the ability to handle situations in a much calmer manner. I thought I was pretty good at handling issues before I was in the deepest depression of my life. But coming out of that, like I know that now when I'm dealing with issues that typically would set me off to a level like I would respond in a less than tactful manner, I learned to respond much more calm and much more like, I don't know, just this, the, 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 the ability to think through an issue and, and respond to it with the proper amount of um, response, I guess you will, I think that's huge because, like, whenever we respond with too much emphasis, you know, it can put cause issues and fall it out and cause an argument or whatever or can just throw us completely off track. But when we, when we can think through an issue, we can respond in the right way every time you know sometimes we don't respond to things right and even i don't obviously i'm not perfect however i feel like it's within my capability to respond in a more tactful and more productive manner now because i can think things through rather than just responding out of emotion every single time to an issue i had no idea that would be fixed you know yeah, I, I think that's actually a big thing for me as well. Um, for me, those kind of situations were always, it was emotional and it was me being emotional about it because every kind of one of those situations, it was, I was subconsciously kind of thinking, how does this impact me? What does this mean to me? what what am i going to win or lose out of this interaction and what carnivores help me to do is kind of calm down and step back and take myself out of it completely and go, so be, because of no emotion there anymore mm -hmm. or much less oh i agree well it, i feel like it gives you the ability to be content in your intake and being like going from being discontent with your intake as far as energy and nutrients does something on a consistent basis to your body that it it allows you to look at things outside of yourself and not always be consumed with you so like for example i can go out of my way to try to help other people or to try to make my family happy or my friends happy or whatever now better than I could before because I'm so content in one area of my life. Being content is not something that I feel like we as humans are good at. We're all, gonna, we're not designed to be content in every area. There's going to be something that we're always, for some people it's money, for some people it's power, for some people it's possessions, for some people it's love. For some people, it's bad relationships. Whatever the case may be, we're discontent and we're consistently seeking to fulfill that hole that nothing can fill. And carnivore fills the nutrient demand that we need in such a way that instead of thinking about, like, you know, like you were saying, like, and, and I was the same way. Me, 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 my health, my type 2 diabetes, my non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, my hypertension, my medication, my, 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 me, 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 me. It starts alleviating these issues in such a way that I can, that I can say, okay, I'm good. So now that I'm good, let's take care of, let's look for the needs in other players and things that they don't know they need and help them get it i think that that can't be over uh, um, overstated either that it that that fulfillment enables us to do so much more than we thought possible before, you know prior to carnivore if that you know if that makes sense yeah um and and on that point it's hard to explain this to 
haven't done carnivore. It's because when you're talking about changing the way you eat, um, and people may have experienced something like keto before or, or, or low carb or whatever, when you, when you try and explain it to them that this is just going to change everything for you, it's going to change your entire life, people don't really understand what what you mean say are you just crazy this is this is some kind of cult this is <laughs> but until you've actually experienced it you need to go that 30 that 60 that 90 days in to kind of go oh yeah and everything's hitting me at once mm-hmm. it, and it's not it's not hitting me in an overwhelming way but it's hitting me in this way that like you said about the hernia it's like oh it's just not there anymore. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a slow fade. The same way that we ended up in the condition we were in before, it was a slow drift into the 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 captivity of the health issues and the depression. And you know, I mean, it, it, in your case, you had a stroke. Like you, it's not like you planned that. It's not like you were like sitting around one day and you were like, "Well, oh, I think today I'm going to have a stroke and you know have these issues." You know, what? No, you didn't. So things are happening, they're out of your control. The it, the thing is, like once you start eating the carnivore, once you start getting the nutrients that your body demands and needs to thrive and perform optimally, it allows you to to not not have that issue. Like you, things aren't coming at you a million miles an hour. It's almost it's almost like your brain power speeds up. Now, I know that's not very scientific and a lot of people go be like, "Well, I need the study. I need the double blind research to show me the evidence of the, you know, enhanced brain speed." Well, like, listen, that's it's not going to happen. Like, you're not going to get these companies who have spent trillions of dollars investing to to broaden their profit margins and to buy the company, the scientists and whatnot um, to, to, to really make this agenda that they've been pushing sink into the American and world population. It's just not going to happen. However, you know, for people like me, for people like you, for the, the many, 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 many countless other people who have tried this way of eating and been on it for any length of time could be able to tell you, like, it's a, it's a, it's a slow fade into where we were in a relatively quick rebound out of it. Um, but the emotions, the feelings, the stability, all the things, it comes before you realize that it's coming. You know what I mean? And, and so I think, I think you're absolutely right in that. You don't realize, um, you don't realize it slipping away, but you also don't realize that once you start giving the nutrients to your body, you don't realize how all the things that are going to change until it happens. And then it's almost like a snap and it. Like, then you realize it's better. Like, like for example, I, I, I will say this, like dreaming. I woke up one night and had a dream that I ate a whole bunch of sugary processed foods and I was woke up extremely mad. Right. And so I'm like, I cannot believe I did this. I've been on this. I've, I've been eating this way for so long. I haven't eaten off plan, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I was upset. And then later on that day, I'm sitting around thinking and I'm like, man, I am sleeping amazing these days. I cannot believe carnivores help my sleeping so much. Because and the reason it triggered it because I was dreaming, right? I didn't realize that I was dreaming, and I remember my dream, and I woke up, and where normally like I'm mad because I'm having a dream about doing something that I don't do, and, you know, and it was so real that I feel like you know I was like, "Dad, gummy, why am I having these dreams? This is crazy. I don't even eat sugar anymore, you know." And I'm mad at myself. Um, I'm like, "Holy crap, man!" Carnivores fix my sleeping. I, I'm sleeping so much at a much better level than I used to, because I used to never dream. I used to, and if I did, it was nightmares. Like I would never remember my dreams if I did dream. And now I'm sleeping at such a level that I, not only am I dreaming, but I'm remembering my dreams when I wake up enough to be mad at myself for having that sugary thing in my dream that I don't normally eat. I mean, that's just how it works, right? 
on on the topic of dreaming one of the, like i remember as a kid i remember dreaming but as i got older and probably sleeping less and and drinking more and eating bad food more and stuff like that the the dreaming just stopped and it has started it's very slow but it has started coming back for me but on kind of as an extension of of the dreaming one thing that has definitely improved for me um is of course the sleep but the thing that happened that i just i'll never ever forget this was one day waking up and just getting ready for work it was just a normal day and when i walk into the train station and i had this feeling this euphoric feeling it was like <laughs> so it's kind of like what have you been smoking right. it's just uh, it just suddenly happened and that lasted just this this feeling of just wellness and like everything was right in the world and stuff like that and it lasted i think it would have been a couple of days but then it dissipated but i think it dissipated in a way that i just got used to the feeling it's not that it went away have you experienced that kind of euphoria at all so like whenever i was younger i did use drug illicit drugs and the only thing that i can relate that euphoric feeling to is being on a, a, a an ingredient a substance a chemical that would elicit that that response in my body um come to find out like when you give your body the correct nutrients you can feel optimal you can feel good and i agree with you i feel like i don't know that that euphoric feeling it's almost like I, like I said, the only thing that I know that I can compare it to is drugs. It's like a euphoric, um, great feeling inside, especially. And at first, it it wasn't that noticeable as far as like being able to describe it. It was noticeable in the way that I felt. It wasn't. No, it wasn't in my comprehension to be able to describe that feeling to someone else because. I don't normally go around telling people, hey, listen, I used to use drugs and I used to feel euphoric. And like, this is how I can, I mean, you sound like a lunatic. I understand why people are hesitant wanting to try, you know, a lot of times wanting to try this because you sound like you're crazy. It fix every, all your problems. It pays all your bills, automatic draft, you know, all the things, you know, and we know that it doesn't, but it, there's just something about it that's so overwhelmingly, um, positive and pushes you in so many good ways and directions that you don't realize you need that once you do it long enough it takes over and you don't desire anything else you know yeah um and like i said i think that hasn't really changed for me it's just that my body kind of uh, i don't know has got to the point where it's like I don't know. It's like when you get this, you know, the the hit of dopamine and you have to keep getting a more extreme hit of dopamine or something to actually notice. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, and, and being able, like, one of the big things for me that, like, I wanted, but I didn't really, I didn't think it was possible to obtain before carnivore. Me and my wife have been married for almost 22 years. July the 20th, it'll be 20, 22 years. We have always been extremely close. Like, when we got married, we literally did not even own a home. We stayed with my parents and my grandparents and, and stayed between the two, traveling back and forth. We'd stay with my grandparents on the weekends, and we would stay with my parents, my mom, on during the week and between their homes until we about two years into our marriage, we ended up buying the house we live in now. So we've been extremely close. We've always stuck together. We've always been loyal. We've always done whatever we had to do to survive. We've always struggled, you know, as far as monetarily to make ends meet, but we've always had each other and that's all we needed. That's all we wanted going into our relationship. And that's been our strength is because that's all we've ever needed. I don't care if I have all the monetary wealth and all the things of the world. I have my wife and my children and my family and the things to me that matters in life. And I didn't need all that other stuff, you know. 
it's nice to have those things. It's nice to not struggle. Um, but at the end of the day, having real valuable things like family and friends and th and relationships with people that love you um, in return is such a big deal. I did not know going in like how I can make her life better. And, and, and what I mean by that is whenever I, me and my wife have a relationship in that when I struggle, she struggles. Whenever she struggles, I struggle. When I'm depressed, it affects her too. When I'm hurting, it hurts her too. It's called having a relationship, a real relationship with someone who you love, you know? And you know yourself, like if your wife is hurting about something, it hurts you too. Those emotions, you take them on yourself because you care for that person. And so being in that place that I was in for three years, being depressed and being tied up in myself, if, if you even go back and listen to my wife say it from herself in the, in, you know, when I had her on the channel, I need to have her back on. Um, she had prepared for her husband, the person that she had been investing life with for 20 years, she was prepared for me to die because she thought I was going to die. And like one of the, one of the things that, that gets to me the most is hearing her talk about that because it's like, I never intended to get my life in such a way that she had abandoned almost abandoned the relationship, not because she didn't care, but because she thought that I was going to die and she would have to continue on without me. That does something to you psychologically, man, that like you can't, you can't contain the emotions of that, that thought. It, it hurts to think that I would let my life get in that way, but it also it keeps in, a pressing reminder on me that like, listen, just because you make excuses and stuff like this, it doesn't just affect you. So whenever you come to this way of eating and you, you know, things that carnivore help that you didn't know you needed, or you didn't know that you could fix. When I say that it helped me be a husband again, it didn't just help me to be the man that I needed to be. It helped me to fulfill that spot that she needed as well. And it helped her to have a more consistent and more hopeful outlook because she's not worried about me dying every day like she was before. So it's it's concentric circles. It goes out from where we are and it affects so much more than just us. But going into it, we don't realize that oftentimes. So it's basically three years of pretty, pretty heavy depression. Oh, man, yes. Yeah. So... Oh, yeah what what was it like i i mean i was never diagnosed with depression but i had some level of it it was probably a lower much lower level but for you what was the point where it was like hang on something's changing something's getting better mm -hmm. what so, what happened what was what was the point so i remember the I actually remember, I don't remember how long it was after I started carnivore, but I remember the day. I remember where I was and like, so I had started eating carnivore, like, I, you know, whatever. I was like, this, something's got to work. Maybe this is it. Dr. Barry, you know, all the things that I'm learning, everybody's heard just me tell the story. Well, it was probably, I don't know, a month and a half, no more than two months in. Um, but it could be right at two months. I had so much energy. I started feeling a certain way and I was sitting on the swing out front and I would go out there every morning and I would talk in the carnivore community group and I would, you know, start encouraging people. And I had been doing that for a while, implementing that in my life. Um, and then all of a sudden, like one day I'm like, man, if I don't get up and if I don't go walk somewhere and do something. It, it, it was just like inside of me, like I had wanted to do it, but I couldn't do it. And I wasn't going to attempt to do it. Finally, inside of me, it wells up this, like, if you don't get up and go walk, like you're going to explode. If you just sit here, you're going to explode, like with energy. And I'm like, man, I've got to do something. I'm, I'm going to go walk. Like I wanted to go walk. 
not I needed to go walk to get my exercise in or I needed to feel better or whatever, whatever. I wanted, I desired it so much, like I was going to go do it. And I was like, I cannot believe that I have the energy to do this. Like, I, I don't believe that I have, like, I desired to go walk. I have only desired to sleep for three years. Now I'm desiring to go walk. That I was like, apparently the carnivore has to do something to, to alleviate this issue because I've never desired to go work out before or desired to go walk for no reason or desired to go run unless I'm getting chased by a bear. Like, it just hasn't happened. So it, it was probably a month and a half, two months, and, like, I, I literally, my desires changed. And realizing that, I started reevaluating. I was like, well, if that has changed in me, and it wasn't like an all of a sudden, like I was sitting down and all of a sudden I realized all this at one time. It was a lot of, whenever you walk a lot, like I was doing, you spend a lot of time in your thoughts talking to yourself. Well, I do anyway. I talk to myself. I get honest with myself. Sometimes I cuss myself out. Sometimes I would just be like, you are so stupid. Why did you ever think that you could do this right here and end up like this right here? Like, it's just not going to happen. Quit making excuses. Quit being a punk, you know, and use whatever words, you know. Um, however, like, I realized also during that same time frame that I didn't have suicidal thoughts anymore. This is something that for three years I had literally thought of almost every single day. Like, how in the world can I be done with this? I can't continue going on like this. It's just miserable. I did, not because it was so bad. People looking on my life from the outside may be like, what in the world is so wrong that you feel that way? It doesn't have to be something that seems that bad to someone else. It's that my perception was off. I wasn't seeing things how they really were. And there were, everything was bad. Every day was a rainy, rainy day. Every day was gloomy. It didn't matter if the sun was out or not, right? And I realized that I wasn't having those thoughts anymore. And so within two months, it was such a night and day difference. Um, it, like you say, it's hard to explain it. Um, but within two months, my whole life had been completely turned upside down and it was completely different. That's awesome. And... Uh, uh, there's probably multiple reasons for stuff like this, but um, I, I I just think one of the one of the big things for me I've noticed about carnivore is you're just compelled to move like that. You know, it's just like your body says, "Okay, you've got to do some work now. I want to work." It's not like, "Oh, I've got to go for a walk again," or something like. It's like, "No, no, no you." let's do it let's go let's go Let, what's next you know um mm -hmm. so for me i think though when i look at the there's so many things that have changed mm -hmm. um so many things that have got better there's nothing that i can say oh that got worse that got so much worse i'm missing <laughs> out there's uh, there's just nothing you know and uh, uh, again for if if someone's watching this and they haven't started and they're kind of in two minds about it um especially if they're thinking yeah but i want to do this but there's going to be lack you know there's there's not going to be lack because mm -hmm. until you experience it you don't know what it's like once you get all the the crap out of your diet and once you get all that crap out and those cravings are gone which in, cravings that are intentionally put in there by food scientists that don't have your best interests at heart. Um, right. It's only then that you, you realize how much better life is without all that stuff. And mm -hmm. just as a follow on from that, I, I, I think the biggest thing I've noticed that has been an improvement in my life is because of all those things going I've just got so much more time every day to fill up with other things, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's got to be at least an extra two hours a day because yes. two hours a day, you're not going into the kitchen, opening the fridge and just kind of looking in the fridge like, well, what is there to eat? And it, that's, it, it's just boredom. 
It's not you're not hungry. Well, sometimes you are hungry because you're not eating actually nutritious food. So your body's going, come on, you need to eat something. But right. often it's not even that. It's just like, oh, I've got nothing interesting to do. What's in the kitchen? And or I'm making a coffee. What food am I going to eat with a coffee? Not because I'm hungry, but because it's automatic. And mm -hmm. when you take all that time out of it, when you take all the time out about thinking, what am I going to eat for the snack? What am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to eat for the next snack? What am I going to eat for the snack after the snack? And when you take all that time out, when you take all the extra time out from shopping, the deciding this box or this box, which one has a nicer color, it's like, you know, two hours at least every day that you get oh, absolutely. back. absolutely. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. I told I told my buddy, I said, listen, I was like, you're going to have one of the biggest things that I encourage people to do who are thinking about considering getting ready or just have jumped in the carnivore. Bring your hobbies with you, the things that you dreamed that you used to could do like you, you dreamed about being a writer, get you some pencils and pens, get in some paper, invest in it. Like, if you wanted to do a sport, like, invest in some equipment that is going to enable you to, to perform this sport. Prepare yourself to do the things that you have always wanted to do but never had time to do. Because when you go carnivore and you stick with it, it's going to, like, and you fix your relationship with the addiction that you have or we have to food it is going to free you up in such a way that you're going to have so much time to do other things and already having a plan of what you want to get into and what you want to do and being prepared to do that just gives you a head start. So just go ahead and get ready to do that. You know, there's so much, it's so nice to invest into like, instead of talking with my wife about what we're going to have for dinner all week, why don't I just talk to my wife about the, our relationship over the last however many years or where we want, how we can strengthen our relationship or what our dreams are, what our goals are, how much she means to me, whatever the case is, investing in the things that matter, investing in doing life rather than thinking about and being consumed and entrapped and revolving around food and when the next time I'm going to eat and what I had to eat last time for the last meal, getting out of that cycle is one of the most liberating things that I feel like, you know, I have experienced. Um, and, and it just, can't, you can't quantify it, you know? So, um, before were you an alcohol drinker? Oh yeah. So, what is it like for you now if you're around, you go out somewhere with friends and they're drinking alcohol or they're, they're eating snacks? What's the feeling for you now? For me, it doesn't even like, it's not what I want. It's not what I ingest. Like sometimes I'm tempted. Sometimes I'll get a whiff of a restaurant if I'm driving down the road and my window's down or whatever and I'll drive past a restaurant, and the smell of the food will hit me, and I'm like, oh, man, that smells pretty good. And other times I'll, like, hit a restaurant, and, and then and it'll, the smell will hit me, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's nauseating. You know, so, I mean, it is what it is. It's not that I desire those things. It's that I think the old memories that I used to have, um, I reminisce about them and maybe that's the, the draw to those, to that situation. As far as tempted to consume alcohol or, um, you know, food that's really off plan that I wouldn't have, I'm not really, it's, it's almost like it's not really that big of a temptation just because I know that it's not real. That's not me anymore. I like whatever the case is, I know that that food is not going to, not going to give me the emotional appeasement that I needed. It, it may, I may think that it will, but after I consume it, I'm just going to feel bad and still be left with the consequences of the emotion. And now the consequences of eating something that throws my body out of whack too. It's almost like a double sabotage. Yeah. I, I think also that you get that feeling now because you can kind of take 
your emotions out of the decision now or it's easier to do you kind of get that you're able to step back more and go yeah it would be nice in the moment but i know how bad i'm going to feel afterwards like you say and and so it's much easier to kind of say no to right oh the the giving into those personal desires man and those those temptations man like like dude don't get me wrong you, nobody can convince me even as a carnivore even as with the the walk and the journey that i've had that that my wife used to make these brownies with the caramel like that's all in the middle of it and like betty crocker or whatever you call it and every once in a while she would take and sprinkle you know some powdered sugar on top and a little throw some chocolate chunks in there i know that would taste sweet i know my brain would light up with just synapses sparking off like crazy but how long is that going to last 20 seconds 30 seconds at tops and then guess what my my brain's going to be like guess what you need another piece you need another piece and i have another piece and maybe maybe i get that a little small firing off of the synapses again and then it dies off and then i eat another one and then i don't get that synapses and it's just i have given in to that that desire and it's all gone and then my body is jacked up for two or three days because i don't eat that way anymore you know and so it is a temptation. It is a temptation and a drag. But understanding that we can sacrifice what we want for what we need is huge, man. Like, I do sometimes want things that I don't need. But to have the life that I need and I desire, I, I forego on the things that I want temporarily. Temporary, um, you know appeasement of our desires isn't going to end us up with the ultimate goal of happiness that we desire in life yeah very well said um so but just as an extension of that when when you have had moments where you've maybe eaten something that's not 100 percent on plan do you it does affect you negatively right Oh, of course, yeah. I've only had about four things that has not been on my plan since I started eating this way. Like four times, like Thanksgiving, I had like now the Texas penis is not carnivore, but it was part of my plan. I instituted that for a reason, and like that's part of the plan. And I have had nothing but carnivore foods, meat, and Texas fajitas. I've had like three or three or four sweets since i started eating this way i haven't had anything but water like i've been like insanely strict like i'm 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 insanely strict about it the reason i ask is like i've been so strict with myself for the almost 17 months now that i've been doing this and the reason I have been is because I know myself and I know that, you know, one taste and that's, mm -hmm. it's just down, downhill after that. So, but when I was in Australia, one of the restaurants we went out to um, served lamb. And um, I was like, I can't get lamb in Japan most of the time. So I'm, I'm really, uh, really looking forward to this. So I had a lamb shank. And I, I asked them for no sauce and no that no anything, just the lamb shank. But it was cooked in spices. There oh. were spices on it, and I thought, oh well, you know, whatever. It's only spices, right? But that affected me so bad that uh, the next day it was, and it was all kind of downstairs. It was like you know, like just you know, maybe too much information, but it was just constant farting all day the next day. You, you don't it realize was how awful. bad that stuff messes with you, right? Yeah, it's awful. And it's only once you get it all out, when you bring it back in for that one day, and then you go, oh, yeah. No wonder I was like that before, because I was eating 20 times this crap before. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. And that that that's the whole reason why I had the Texas fajitas in my plan, because it, like I didn't do that until five months after. Like for five months, I did I didn't eat anything off plan, 
And then after a couple of months, I was like, I'm going to have Texas Vegas once a month. Like, I'm going to have it. I'm going to go, and I'm going to have it, and it's going to be enough for one meal. And when I eat it, it's going to remind me why I still eat this way, why I eat this way, why I need to eat carnivore. And every time, it's not extremely off-plan. Texas fajitas is basically just a, a, a tortilla wrap with, with shrimp, chicken, steak, onions, and green peppers. And, you know, you can get a little lettuce and sour cream stuff that goes in it. Basically, a, a burrito, taco, whatever you want, a fajita. It's not extremely crazy. It's nowhere close to the processed bullcrap that I used to have eaten all day every day but it's enough to tear my stomach up a little bit and give my brain this little bit of a stimulant and like for two days I will feel off when I eat it but it'll remind me listen you eat carnivore because you perform optimally anytime you think about having something that's not what's on your plan remember what you're doing here and, it, and don't get me wrong, the fajitas taste great. But the feeling is reminds me that it's, you know, it's not worth it. Yeah, and actually, uh, that that reminder occasionally can be a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like, you don't want to go back to this everyday kind of feeling, you know? It's, mm -mm. You've got to get yeah. your mind right. That's why, like, I love my brother Kip. I love our buddy like I, my heart goes out to him. He's struggling, and like he's doing his videos and his cheating thing and whatever. And I, you know, I get that. I get that. Kip's lost a hundred pounds. He knows what's working. He he's he. I have talked to him multiple times. Kip is 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 no dummy. He's not you know whatever whatever. He's struggling the exact same way every single one of us struggled with the temptations, and like he's just doing it in a public fashion and a lot of people don't know how to take that but i think kip will come through i think he'll be successful and i can't wait to see where kip ends up um you know larry can testify you know our buddy larry he can testify to the same thing him and cassie mm -hmm. you know on their channel fell off twice while they were in the public eye um so it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of stress and a lot of uh a lot of pressure, I feel like, whenever you're trying to do the journey and, and, and make those changes in your life in front of the public, in, you know, like, like we do oftentimes. At the same time, the most important thing that Larry, Cassie, Kip, myself, you, and everyone else can do is, like, you have to take inventory. You have to take, you know, account of your own journey first. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to help anybody else. You're going to revert what you have, the progress that you've made, and you're going to, you know, um, you're going to stumble and struggle. So mm -hmm. keep the main thing the main thing. That's what I try to focus on a lot of the time. 